Now, welcome to this IG Investment interview. Today, we're talking to the CEO of Sentiment, Martin Horgan, the FTSE 250 listed gold producer, just coming out uh, with its most recent uh, quarterly update. Uh, Martin, thank you so much for joining us. First off, let's go through the top lines. Q4 production coming in at just over 109,000 ounces for the quarter. You hit the midpoint of your four-year guidance. Uh, does that mean you're fully on track for your growth strategy? Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, look, absolutely. Look, I think uh, 2022 was a, a great year for us. Uh, we had two sort of uh, main objectives for the year in 2022. Firstly and foremost, to deliver into our guidance that we'd stated uh, uh, in terms of both production of ounces of gold uh, and also our cost guidance as well. I think that's quite important given the inflationary environment we find ourselves in. So delighted that we uh, delivered the fourth quarter in line with our plan. Uh, and of course, that aggregated into production of 441,000 ounces of gold against a guidance range of 430 to 460 so just around the midpoint of ounce production i think as well uh, cash costs uh, we came in uh, at the bottom end of guidance uh, and in terms of our uh, all in sustaining costs uh, just under 1400 which was inside the uh, the top end of guidance which we'd previously uh, identified during the year is where we'd come out so so i think that um, uh, from a gold production basis delighted with the uh, the progress as we continue to return the asset towards that 500,000 ounce production level. But again, as I say, given that inflationary environment we find ourselves in, delighted that the team are able to navigate those headwinds uh, and deliver cost guidance as well. So, so I think uh, another great step uh, in terms of restoring Sukari back to the 500,000 ounce level. I think in parallel with that production uh, uh, and cost uh, guidance, uh, we had a number of uh, key projects in the year. Uh, and of course, those projects are designed to both sort of maximize the full potential of the Sukari mine, uh, making sure we've identified all the gold that's available, uh, mining that as quickly as possible through our production rate, uh, and looking at uh, controlling our cost base as well. So a number of those projects were delivered into, uh, again, which underpins our faith in, in both Sukari and Egypt as well. So a, a highly satisfactory year from 2022 uh, at, at Sukari. Let's push that forward to uh, the full year 23 then. You're targeting a production level of 450,000 to 480,000 ounces per annum. Can you just talk investors through how you're going to hit this target? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think when we look at uh, our conference of, uh, of, of now operating the mine, of really understanding uh, what makes Sukari tick, uh, I think we've got a, in a good position understanding the open pit and how that unfolds going forward. Uh, and I think we see sort of steady state uh, uh, sort of uh, operations at the open pit. I think from a processing perspective, again, I think we're in a, a good position there with some optimization uh, and projects to come in 23 and beyond. But I think really the driver, the one that, that sort of uh, uh, the ability to take us from that range of 430 to 460 last year and push us to 450 to 480 this year is around the underground. Uh, and I think as we saw last year, uh, a number of significant step forwards as that part of our operations. Um, and, you know, starting off the year with the removal of the mining contractor and going owner mining, we believe there's great opportunity there around both cost savings and productivity gains. And we certainly started to see that coming through in the second half of the year. I think also then uh, in terms of our geological focus that we've put at the mine over the last two years, uh, we had a further gain in terms of total uh, reserve base in the, in the mine last year, another 800,000 ounces added to reserves. Uh, and a lot of that came from the underground. That's almost two years of uh, two million ounces of reserves added over the last two years. And with that underground uh, uh, sort of increase in the reserve base, what that's allowed us to do then in conjunction with being now an owner mining in the underground, of course, is to look to increase the production rate. Uh, and that sort of productivity gain that we'll see in the underground allows us this year to, to produce more gold from the underground and hence that step up in production to the 450 to 480. But I think importantly for us as well, it really underpins our further confidence in expanding the underground. And in the fourth quarter of last year, we put some uh, plans out into the market around how we see the ability to increase underground production by around about 30%. Uh, and that will then really be one of the key catalysts driving us back to that 500,000 ounce uh, mark from there as well. So, so I think, uh, uh, you know, lots of confidence and excitement around where we can go. Uh, and I think driven by that underground performance that we're seeing coming through. Now, Martin, it's a, a key, of course, driving revenue and driving profits. But of course, every CEO we've spoken to from uh, aerospace to retail has been talking about those rising inflation pressures. How is sentiment dealing with that? I think it's a really good point. And, and it is really the zeitgeist out there right now is, 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 you know, lots of investors and ourselves are focused on, uh, on inflation. Uh, I would say that, that as far as we started a, a, a cost uh, reduction campaign back in 2020, 2021, 
uh, our CFO, Ross Gerard, mapped out a, a strategy for taking $150 million out of our cost base. So, so this was something that, as sentiment, we were looking at even before sort of, you know, inflation started to, to, to raise its head over, say, second half of 21 into early part of 2022. So we had a number of initiatives that we started to look at to, to, to reduce costs. As inflation started to bite in the second half of 21 and through to 22, we were able to accelerate some of those plans. Uh, and we look at sort of, you know, almost two tiers. So we've got some large scale opportunities that take, you know, significant chunks out of our cost base. For example, uh, our recently built solar plants, uh, 36 megawatts, uh, uh, will uh, reduce our diesel consumption to the tune of about $20 million a year of operating costs on an ongoing basis. It costs us $36 million to build, so an under two-year payback in the current diesel price environment. And of course, massive savings on an ESG basis in reducing carbon from the emissions to the environment. So we have those large-scale projects where we're looking to take some, some you know, significant costs out of the cost base. But also we're looking at the, some of the smaller opportunities. Uh, and I believe that sort of smoke, focusing on the detail also allows us to, to aggregate some quite considerable cost savings. Uh, and it's smaller things like, for example, tyre bays, where we've invested in a tyre repair facility, uh, where we're looking to take a tyre from, you know, sort of 3,000 hours of 4,000 hours of, of use through to six, 7,000 hours. Uh, and then when we start looking at that, that could be a two to $3 million a year saving, given the tyre consumption that we have at site. Then you look at things like, for example, uh, reuse of oils, uh, uh, regrinding media, and all of a sudden you take, you know, three, four, five of these two to three million dollar uh, sort of saving opportunities, aggregate them up, and then you've got sort of fifteen to twenty million dollars of potential annual savings as well. So we're really focused on some of the bigger picture stuff, uh, solar, as I mentioned, uh, lightweight truck trays, and so on, but also some of these smaller opportunities. And we believe that across all of these opportunities, there's still uh, a lot to come in terms of cost savings, uh, and really help us to sort of battle those headwinds of inflation as we go forward. Right, let's take a look at sentiment shares now for our investors. Uh, having a look at the chart here, now they are down some 3% after those results. So uh, if you look at my arrow here, uh, however, I, it must be said that uh, we are seeing uh, quite uh, low volumes at the moment. Uh, and also, Berenberg earlier today has raised uh, sentiment's price target to 141 pence from 123. Uh, Martin, your thoughts around the share reaction early on today? Do you think this is largely due to the projection of the price of gold or something else in play? Uh, look, I think if you look at sentiment specifically on a day-to-day -day basis or, or today's basis, I would suggest that um, you know we're not massively out of kilter with some of our peers. There was a little bit of market weakness across some of our gold-producing peers, both in London and uh, and elsewhere. So, look, I'm, I'm not particularly concerned around sort of on a day-to-day -day basis. I think from my perspective, uh, I think a lot of the work we've been doing uh, over the last sort of two to three years to uh, restore confidence in the company, uh, in the management team, to demonstrate operability of the asset and deliver into those targets. I think that has changed uh, investor sentiment to all sentiment. I think we've seen obviously a, a, a good rally in the gold price, uh, but in order to participate in that gold rally, uh, gold rally, uh, you then have to be a, a stock that people want to buy. So I think if I look back to our sort of uh, lower prices around the sort of the 80s, not so long ago, 80 pounds a share, uh, you know, coming up to sort of 115 to 120 today, I think that's a, a real endorsement. One of, of, of the, the quality of the sentiment assets, uh, the team that, that that's doing that operational work for us there, uh, and that allows us to participate in this gold price rally, as well as the sort of confidence people have both in our growth opportunities uh, and our return uh, opportunity through the dividend that we pay as well. So I think, um, you know, any sort of short term day to day trading, uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm less concerned about on a day to day basis. Uh, and I do believe that sort of the, the recent share price trend reflects that renewed confidence in the business, which I'm delighted to see. And I think there's a lot more to come, a lot more catalysts to come in 2023 uh, as we look at sort of expansion plans in the underground to demonstrate those, delivery of the Dropo PFS, our asset in West Africa, uh, and also uh, uh, sort of further sort of cost initiatives around things like the grid power connection that we're looking at as well. So, so I think a, a good run over the last six months, and I think more to come from a share price perspective. Yes, and the Duropa project, uh, um, that involves a solar plant, yes, that, uh, that you're hoping that will deliver huge cost savings. No, so the solar plant we've constructed is in Egypt, and that's ah. operational now, has been operational since the, the third quarter of, of last year, and that's delivering those, those both cost and carbon reductions right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Duropa is uh, our project in, in northern Cote d'Ivoire. Yes, that's uh, right. 
That's right. So, so that's currently under a pre-feasibility study. Uh, and we hope to have that finished in the first half of this year that demonstrate a, you know, effectively a second mine in a new jurisdiction for Sensamin, start to deliver into that strategy of being a multi-asset, multi-jurisdictional producer, uh, and something that we're looking to, to work hard against to, uh, to make sure we deliver that in the, the most timely manner, but also in an efficient and cost-effective way as well. So um, just a quick wrap up of um, your uh, plans for diversification. If you had three things that you wanted to deliver and achieve in the next two years in terms of diversification, what would that be? Well, I think, you know, the three buckets uh, that I'd look at in terms of work streams. So the first one would be to, you know, to fully optimize and deliver the full potential of the Sukari mine. You know, I think we've, we can get back to that 500,000 ounce level. We can get that done in terms of a, a, on a cost effective basis to be around about 11 to 1200 all in sustaining costs uh, and really have that as being a real strong platform with which to build a business. So I think the next two to three years, let's really get Sukari fully maximized and fully humming along and being the real, the real engine of the growth for the business. I'd love to see our exploration permits around uh, in Egypt, in the Egyptian Eastern Desert, around the mine. I'd love to start seeing us having some exploration success. Uh, that could be exploration success that feeds satellite material into our existing mine, or it could be exploration success that warrants the development potential of a new mine uh, elsewhere within Egypt. And I think there's some exciting news um, in terms of our potential uh, sort of exploration work to come over 2023 as we start to drill test some of the targets we're identifying now as well. And I think in that same two to three year window, we can deliver the ROPA. We can have built and be producing gold uh, from our second mine as well. So, so I think that, that when we look at that, I think that share price run has done very nicely on what we see today. But I think there's a lot more embedded opportunity within the portfolio. And I honestly believe that we've got both the people uh, and the capacity to deliver that. And I think that in part is due to that debt facility, our inaugural debt uh, facility that we put in place in December last year. It just gives us additional financial flexibility around our already strong balance sheet with those cash flows from Sukari to be able to deliver that growth in the business while still maintaining a dividend payment as well. My thanks to you, Martin. Exciting stuff, Martin Horgan there. CEO of Sentiment talking about diversification and, of course, the results. Uh, Sentiment trading at 111.97 as we speak. This is IG.